after several weeks of lots of sewing, we're making masks, wanting to keep that area very clean, extra hand washing and disinfecting and stuff, I'm ready to get dirty. I want to make a mess. So I got out a bunch of paints today and did some jelly printing and I'm going to share with you um, that process and the results of what I did today. Um, before I get started, I will mention to you a little bit about paints. I have had these paints, some of these for many, many years, um, and some of them are more recent. What I found, I didn't get out any of my art quality paints, the things I would have bought at an art supply store. I just didn't get those out today, but I got out um, some of the cheapy Anita's paints and the Martha Stewart Crafts paints, which aren't terribly expensive, and those actually work the best. For paints that I haven't used in a long time, these none of these gave me any trouble. All of them worked. The Distress paints, this one came out good. Some of my Distress paints just don't pour anymore or there's so much gunk around the, the top of them that just make a big mess. Um, all of them are pretty old uh, in terms of being, say, at least two, maybe three years old or older. But they're not as old as a lot of this other stuff. So, um, I love the distress, distress colors, but I personally, I didn't find that they lasted as long in my stash. If you use your paints very often, you won't have a problem with that. But if you're not just done any jelly printing in a year, like I have, the first thing I really should have done today was gone through all of the paints that I pulled out, and there were a whole bunch more of them out here, and checked them before I started. And you'll kind of see that in the course of the video. But here's what I want to share with you um, of making some... Um, jelly prints. We're going to do some stickers, some die cuts, and some unusual things um, with jelly printing. For this first page, what I'm doing is using a piece of cardstock that I glued some leftover die cut pieces to. These are pieces that were left when I did a background, and sometimes when you do a background you get the same cut that's just scrap. And so I glued those little um, plus signs on there and then that helps to create some texture or some some design in my uh, jelly prints and I had done a couple of backgrounds already that were just pretty much solids and this will add a little bit of that kind of cross or plus sign to um, a piece and I have some unusual things I'm using here and I've shown some of these in other videos they're leftover packaging um, some that's a piece where I had die cuts and that's where I've, I've the piece that's left over after you cut all the, the die cut bits out um, some chipboard and then this was one where I think I was practicing how a die cut was going to look before I cut it out of the designer paper or the cardstock that I really wanted to use so we're going to do something fun with that in a little bit too all right, and I'll use some of these to help make um, some of my designs because what I want to do is to change the color of those stickers. I have um, some stickers that I'm just not using. They were originally purchased to match um, certain designer paper, and I don't have the paper anymore, and the colors are just not things that I'm working with, so I want to change them and see if I can get something more useful out of those uh, stickers. So I'm going to put down some layers of color here, and we're going to see what happens when we add some print to stickers. And what I don't know about is whether I'm going to end up with the stickers still on the backing sheet or they're just going to all come off. <laughs> so this is this was a I, I just did not know. And mostly they stayed on the backing sheet, but I had a couple that came off. But it's already starting to change the color. You can see the reds and the grays still coming through here, but they're getting that purple uh, tone to them and there's some sheen to this from the types of paint that I'm using. So I'm already changing them and some of them they wouldn't need much more than this um, and others are going to need a little bit greater amount of color in order to get them to be a little more interesting looking stickers. And again I'm using some pa leftover packaging to make um, impressions on my jelly plate, make some designs, and then we'll use press the stickers down to that and that will put some blue color on quite a few of the stickers, a brighter blue. And you'll notice, you'll see them a little while with the with peeled off the backing paper and they really show up a lot more. And in between times I'm just coloring some um, 
cardstock. Now I'm using um, a roller that was left over from I think uh, glue dots and some other tools to make designs and some bright green paper and this is adding a lot of fun design to my stickers. So they're getting multiple layers here. The only problem is they, they stick to my gloves. <laughs> That's where I did I ended up shedding the gloves and giving up after a while because they, they sort of stuck. I don't like things to go to waste, so I'll always have a piece of scrap cardstock laying around to pick up some of the extra color. And there are a bunch of the stickers, and you can see now how they're looking. And they're very, very different from those grays and reds that we started out with. But you have the great image, the great shapes, and um, they could easily, if they don't still stick, they can easily be added to um, to a layout with glue. And now they have all this wonderful color to them. So I think they're a lot fresher looking than they were. And I liked this so much that I had two packs of these, or two sheets of these, so I went ahead and did the other sheet as well. And in between times, I have an old set of October Afternoon from a collection that I just didn't really, the, the images were just not things that I wanted to use. So this is going to create label stickers, those shapes, and there again they can be used in my layouts, layered with other things, and uh, we're kind of changing the tune on them with giving them a different color. And I ended up adding some yellows and some brighter colors to those too. And there was that other sheet that I had that um, because I just I liked the first one so much. I just did these instead of the blues and greens. I did these more in pinks and oranges. And some of them won't really need a lot because I don't mind if something like that black and white stripe would show through some the through the color. That's fine. And I, try, I experimented here with this board where I glued buttons all over it and created a background. And you'll see at the end where it would have been great if I had stopped at that point. <laughs> all right, just finishing up the stickers, getting a little bit more color on those that didn't get enough uh, color to them. And there's a... Um, a die cut piece that I'm adding a little color to that or, or using it to add a little bit of design and it also adds a little bit of color. Sort of works as a mask on my jelly plate. Okay, and for this sheet, I am taking some packing material from a cookie or candy container and just creates a little bit of design on this pink paint on this pink paint. So I'm doing pink paint. Some of it has some um, um, glittery stuff to it. some of the I think some of the Martha Stewart paint. And then all and just some regular pink paint. and so I'm doing a tone on tone on this. Uh, die cut sheet in the background and you'll see it at the end it comes out really pretty. It's subtle one layer is all it needed to give it to make it just have a lot of interest. Okay let's take a look at what I ended up with from my jelly printing fun today. Some things that were successful and some things that were not. I love the stickers. Really, really love the stickers. I did all of these in the greens and purples and then these red ones with the idea from these both being from the same set of doing layering kinds of things with them. Doing something like this when I'm putting them on a page or card. So I think these are going to be a lot of fun to work with and I took sort of what appeared to me now to be drab colors and made those a lot of fun. So, and then I have these October afternoon ones, so the shapes are a little more like traditional label stickers, but they can still be added to a page to add um, some more elements, especially when you're grouping elements. 
So I'm really tickled with the stickers. I think those looked really good. Um, this was the page where I took the die cuts and glued those on. I intended to go back over this with some more variations of colors and stuff, and I forgot until I got everything uh, put away. So I didn't get to, to do that on this one. But this helped me create uh, this page, which I think is mildly successful. I had a couple of these, and there it's a subtle design. So those were, were sort of successful. It, it worked. It wasn't my favorite thing, but it worked. Um, sometimes I know when to leave well enough alone. This was a page that was just, I was just sort of taking a piece of paper and cleaning up what was on the um, jelly plate, and I love the look of that. It looks like water to me. I had two of these, and one of them I added a bunch more stuff to. I didn't leave it alone, uh, but I really like that. A lot of these will be just used as backgrounds. This one had some, a little bit more design. I thought it was a fun page. Now here are a couple where I started out with just a simple pink and um, red backgrounds that I had that didn't have a lot of texture or design to them and tried to add some more design. And this one I'm not as thrilled with as this. I like the subtler designs. Because I used my homemade stuff and didn't use real stencils today, I've got a lot more subtle designs than I would have if I used a stencil and you could really see the flowers and all that kind of stuff. The circles, though, that you create with, like, a, um, this is what's left from a glue dot roll, um, makes a neat design, too. So here are some others, and you can see some of the faint designs in the background of what I did. I think that was that purple one, and I added a bunch of stuff to it. This is not a successful page to me, too. That just came out sort of a muddled bunch of colors. I, probably, I won't keep that one. This one I kind of like. These are the kinds of things I'll cut up and use as backgrounds on cards. Now, there was one that didn't work out very well. It started out great. This was the buttons, where I had the board with the buttons on them. Okay. And I created this pink background with the buttons. And then I tried to go over it using this as a stencil that I had made the, um, that the labels had come out of. And I remembered to put it so that the paper wouldn't stick to it when it peeled up, but it just, it didn't take. And you can see it just made a globby mess. And so that one is not going to work out either. So I've got some things that I really liked and some things that were kind of okay. Oh, here's one more I really liked. Subtle. This was another time where I left well enough alone. I just did one layer on this. It was cut out of this pink uh, cardstock, and I just used the thing from the candy or cookie box to add some texture to my paint or some, to peel away a little bit of the color from my paint. Did a couple of different passes with it to get the whole thing covered and to me that's enough. That makes a, that would make a really pretty scrapbook page background without doing anything else. I might, you know, pop up some hearts on top or add some brads in the middle of the flowers, you know, when I put around my photo and stuff and that's all. It doesn't need a lot of stuff. So this was my fun today, and I hope you enjoyed this and, and found some, some usefulness out of it with your uh, jelly prints. I keep things like this filed in a vertical file by color. So this would go in the blue or green section, that one in the purple section. And then when I need colors or I'm doing cards or something, I just go through and I find something that would make a neat background for a card or a mat for a scrapbook photo or something, and that's where these end up getting used. So anyway, that's what I've been doing today in my scrap room. Thanks for joining me today.